Welcome to Along the Way. I'm John Matarazzo, your host and fellow traveler. Thank you for joining me along my way as I try to become more like Jesus every day. The goal of Along the Way is to identify the moments in life that Jesus really is walking with us and trying to get our attention. But just like the disciples along the way to Emmaus, we are missing those moments that our hearts are burning within us. I want us to identify these moments, learn from others, and apply those lessons to our lives so that we don't miss the blessings God has for us along the way in our life's journey. Since I started working at Charisma Media, I've had the opportunity to do podcast interviews that I wouldn't normally consider an along the way episode because I was doing the interview for Charisma News or some other format. And I've also been interviewed on other people's podcasts too. Those have been great opportunities as well as interesting conversations, and I want to make sure that I share them with you as well. Pilgrim's Progress is one of my favorite stories from when I was growing up. The cartoon version of John Bunyan's allegory still plays in my mind. In this modern world, the message is still the same, but sometimes the way that the story is told can benefit from an update. In this episode, I'm pulling from an interview that I did for Charisma News. I talk with Joel Berry, the managing editor for the Babylon Bee satirical website. He and Kyle Mann co-wrote the postmodern Pilgrim's Progress, and we talk about that, Elon Musk, and the prophetic Babylon Bee headlines. After my interview with Joel, I downloaded the postmodern Pilgrim's Progress on Audible and really enjoyed the story. I'll get to our conversation in just a moment, but I want to thank you for listening to Along the Way. All of my episodes and social links are available at my website, alongtheway.media. You can also join my email list to get updates right in your inbox. All the links from this episode will be in the show notes. And now, here's my conversation with Joel Berry. This is John Matarazzo for Charisma News, back with a special guest here today. I've got Joel Berry from the Babylon Bee. He's located in Ohio, although the rest of the team is in California. He's in Ohio. He and Kyle Mann, the editor-in-chief for the Babylon Bee, who is currently still in Twitter jail, um, they, they've put together a new book, a, re, a retelling of this of this amazing story that I grew up with that so many people have, The Pilgrim's Progress, but you put a, a unique twist on that. So, Joel, it's great to have you on the Charisma News podcast to talk about this retelling of this of this well-loved story. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So the, the postmodern Pilgrim's Progress, which it is a mouthful to say um, – <laughs> Tell us about you can call it Triple why, P for short. The, the Triple P, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I want to hear a little bit about like what's the inspiration behind this because you guys yeah. are cranking out a bunch of content all the time mm-hmm. for the Babylon Bee and all the different things that you guys touch. You're doing videos uh, that are coming out on YouTube all the time. I mean, when you're when you're not in Twitter jail, you know things are getting out there. But you know the articles are hilarious more than just the headlines and the art. I mean, it's there's there's so much uh, cleverness and uh, just gifting that that God has given you guys to really be able to speak uh, truth to power in a lot of different ways Thank and you. through and it's not just uh, talking about the cultural things you're talking about things within the church and so I appreciate that there's no there's nothing that's uh, that's too sacred for you guys to go <laughs> after so I do want to talk about the book but let's let's talk a little bit about your work with the B yeah. and uh, just kind of like what that's like because i know a a lot of people like the babylon bee but not many people know what it's like to be on the other side of that yeah well it's it's a blast i've been doing this full time uh for a little over two years now uh when i came on as the managing editor kind of helping kyle run the site uh writing a lot of the satire um and it's it's a dream come true i mean i don't have a comedy background i I, uh, I was in uh, corporate sales, uh, corporate supply chain sales before doing this. So okay. usually when I tell people that, they're like, oh, my gosh, are you serious? Like, you know, how did this happen? Right. And I, 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 can't, uh, I can't really explain it other than that, uh, you know, uh, God is uh, a, a merciful God, and, and he, mm-hmm. he mercifully placed me uh, in a job where um, I, I could actually use my talents. You know, and and I I know how rare that is these days. You know, to to, mm-hmm. to find something that is is really um, doesn't feel like work and and that plays on your strengths. And so, it's been a blast. You know, I I, I think the one of the best things about it. You know, it, 
not just for me, but for for people who read the B, is that um, mm-hmm. with with all of the uh, just the, the for lack of a better word, awful things happening in our culture. You know, there's a lot of hand wringing. Yeah. There's a lot of angst. There's a lot of worry when we look about when we look at um, where our culture is going, where where our country is going, um, mm-hmm. and to. To to kind of uh, start by like kind of giving that to God, you know, entrusting it to God, mm-hmm. and then um, changing your your mindset a little bit to where you're looking out at the world, you're looking at the corruption and and the craziness, and you're trying to find what's funny about it. It's a really just it's yeah. a really fun way to live <laughs> and a really fun mindset, and so mm-hmm. it's it's made me a happier person. And and I you know a lot of the feedback we get from people who read the bee is that it's made them happier people too, that, you know, you, you can't just have a, uh, a constant, uh, stream of, of this news, um, bad news all the time. Um, yeah. Without having a little levity, uh, once in a while. And, and so I think, especially with a, a lot of the, the places people used to go for comedy, you know, late night television, uh, Saturday mm-hmm. night live has kind of abandoned our, our tribe, you know, our, the Christian, right. For lack of a better word, um, we've, we've kind of swooped into, you know, to, to bring laughs to, to that segment of the population. So, um, it's just fun. It's very gratifying. It's, it's, it's enjoyable. Um, I'm on the East coast, the rest of the teams on the West coast. So I, I kind of wake up with the news and, and kind of get a sense for what Uh people are talking about each day. And then I'm, I'm kind of sending the marching orders out to our writers. I write a lot of stuff. I do photoshops as well. Um, and we're kind of, trying to figure out what's going to what's going to be the most important thing to talk about um and mix it up with some you know some family humor some church humor so that it's not sure. all political news yeah cuz i mean i think one of the things that has been the most interesting with the babylon b is that you guys have been more prophetic <laughs> than comedy writers in a lot of ways i mean uh here at the at, at charisma media and charisma news we deal a lot with with the prophecy and, and, and <laughs> things that are coming around that way but it's like okay we we have the babylon b too and it seems like you guys are ahead of what's happening in in the world too because whenever we think it can't get any crazier and the babylon b is just talking about this absurd thing wait a couple weeks and it's probably going to be true how does that feel well you know it's it's gratifying because it it tells us that we're doing a good job at satire i mean you know and we're not the only yeah. ones um you know the simpsons um south park have have also been very uh, oh, true yeah um very good at predicting the future and, and when you when you're when you have your finger on the pulse of the culture and uh, you have a good understanding of the world view of the other side and, and people who don't mm-hmm. think like you. Um, it's it's yeah. you'll find it's it's not that hard to predict what they're <laughs> what they're going to do next. And so uh, you know, so a lot yeah. of it is uh, us just kind of waking up every morning and thinking, you know, what is the what if I were you know if I were a leftist, if I were a politician, um, if I were a, a leader in the church, uh, you know, what would I <laughs> what would I do in in a couple weeks? Sure, and, and yeah, uh, sure enough, a lot of them do come true. We'll be back after a quick break. Mother Teresa once said, There are many in the world who are dying for a piece of bread, but there are many more dying for a little love. Do you ever wish that you could increase your capacity to give and receive love? If so, I invite you to subscribe to my podcast, Filled with His Love, the podcast that draws on religion and psychology to help you strengthen your attachment relationships with family, with friends, and with God. <laughs> Which is, it, it is wild. And, um, you know, one of the things that's in the news right now, and I would, uh, you know, I just, I hope it's okay to ask about this. You know, Elon Musk is in the process or, you know, in the yeah. saga, really. Um, it's it's almost like its own Lord <laughs> of the Rings in some way. You know, it's will he, won't yeah. he w- actually, you know, and what's going to be uncovered as he's uh, in this process of buying Twitter. But, it, you know, I heard that he actually reached out to the Babylon Bee to see if you guys were really in Twitter <laughs> jail for something that you did. And that, is, is that something that, like, really helped him make that decision to pull that trigger and, and go for that purchase? Yeah, you know, I, I suspect it was probably a contributing factor. You know, he, he is a fan. Um, you know, when we are, were on Twitter, he was often replying to a lot of our articles or, sh- you know, um, 
commenting on a lot of our articles. And, and so I, I, it may have been the straw that broke the camel's back. I'm not sure. Um, but it is still kind of an open question as to whether or not that deal will go through. And, and, and we hope that it will because um, mm-hmm. Twitter is such a, uh, it's such a poorly run business. It's run by ideologues that are really more interested in controlling the narrative mm-hmm. for their ideological tribe than they are in making money. And so um, Elon is paying a, a, a high premium for a, kind of a, a poorly run business. And I can't think of anyone else who mm-hmm. would be willing to do uh, something like that other than someone like Elon, who's a little bit crazy and, and is not driven so much by mm-hmm. money as he is these kind of grand uh, grand ideas about, you know, uh, furthering human progress and free speech and things like that. And so mm-hmm. um, I don't know if there's anyone uh, crazy enough to buy Twitter besides Elon, which is why I hope it happens. <laughs> yeah. Hey, me too. Me too. Um, I, I just think it's a very interesting saga because, you know, more things are being uncovered about that. And, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, more Babylon Bee headlines about <laughs> that saga as well. But, you know, we, we really, you know, we wanted to start this interview just talking about some things yeah. that people are already aware of, just to kind of give some updates on that. But the thing that you and Kyle have partnered together with, because, I mean, let's face it, you're not doing enough work. I mean, you just kind of come up with these crazy ideas, and you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm joking. You're, you're a, you guys do a ton of work, uh, yeah. but you decided to write a book together, and uh, you, you know, this postmodern Pilgrim's Progress. And this isn't the first book that the Babylon Bee has put together. The, the also the Babylon Bee Guide to <laughs> Wokeness was uh, was pretty well received, and it's uh, it's pretty funny. I mean, some of the stuff in there, it's it's satire, but it, again, it's also <laughs> prophetic as well. But so you're taking kind of a little bit of a twist here, and taking a beloved story and putting a twist on it. So uh, tell us about how you know we go from the the John Bunyan characters, and now you you've updated it. Tell us about what you can about your postmodern Pilgrim's Progress. Yeah, well, I'll start by saying that this was the book that we wanted to write from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the Babylon Bee Guide to Wokeness, that was just our, our foot in the door with the publisher <laughs> so, that, <laughs> so that we could write a book that did well with them. Uh, but this postmodern Pilgrim's Progress has been, uh, th- it's been on Kyle's mind for many years since before he met me. Um, it was a very uh, important book in, in both of our uh, lives growing up uh, as young Christians. And, you know, um, he, he had always kind of wanted to do some sort of a modern retelling, because uh, there is something kind of um, mm-hmm. funny and a little bit satirical about Pilgrim's Progress. I mean, it's, it, for, for one, it's, it's one of the first, oh, yeah. uh, if not the first, uh, you know, English novel, uh, one of the most uh, important uh, English uh, language books. Um, and uh, mm-hmm. there's... there's something that satirists do uh, with analogies uh, uh, that are very similar to allegory. And, and so um, we saw it as kind of a way to um, to do what we do with the, the Babylon Bee, with our satire, and work it into a narrative that's, that's kind of a commentary on uh, the modern church, what it's like to be a Christian uh, in, uh, you know, in America, mm-hmm. uh, a modern evangelical... Uh, and uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. So we, we injected a lot of humor. Uh, we injected some tropes that we love just in fiction. It's, it is a sci-fi book, so there's multiverses, there's aliens. Um, it's it's oh, narrated by this angelic uh, creature who's kind of uh, bemused and uh, confused by human beings. Um, and it's it's full of his. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah, it's, you know, I, I just it was just really fun to write, and uh, and I. I, I I think that it. I think that people who read it will get a lot out of it. It's. It's. There's. There's a lot of insight about our current culture, um, a lot of humor. It's a classic hero's journey, and uh, mm-hmm. you know the feedback so far, just from uh, initial reviews, has been overwhelmingly positive, more than I could have dreamed. You know, you, when you write something like this, you put it out there, and you, you're kind of worried, like, is it good? Is it not? How is this going to be received? And and so mm-hmm. far, the reception has been really humbling to 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 hear what what people are getting out of it. That's really good. You know, um, one of the things that I always thought was interesting about the original Pilgrim's Progress was just the (laughs) names of the characters that Pilgrim, you know, ran into, you know. And so is there, did you work in some of those uh, unique names as well? Uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll have, uh, you'll you'll run into characters like the Smiling Preacher, uh, Mr. Loved by the World, 
uh, Mr. Humanist, uh, Pastor, uh, Faith. You know, we, we have we have allegorical names very mm-hmm. similar to Bunyan. I think one thing that we yeah. we did in, in de- kind of departing from Bunyan a little bit is that um, Bunyan in the original Pilgrim's Progress always very explicitly explained what each allegory meant. You know, there, there's like mm. a scene at the beginning when Christian right, sees right. this man grasping at straws on the ground with a rake. And then he goes into the next room and the angel yeah. says, okay, here's what that means, the, that thing that you just saw. Here's what it means. And he explains it. Um, our book mm-hmm. doesn't explain everything. Um, it has a lot of allegory in it. And and what's been kind of fun uh, to see in, in the initial reaction to it is, is how... Uh, Different people reading it are are getting different things, so so we're we're more explicit mm. in some areas. We're a little more, uh, we're a little less explicit in others, which I think it, sure. it, it makes the narrative a little more uh, breezy to to read through the narrative. Uh, makes it a little less clunky, I think, and and uh, some things are open to interpretation, which is fun. Yeah, what are some new spins on the different things that uh, Christian, the main character? had you know as as i think what yeah. his name in this is ryan <laughs> yeah. fleming what are some of the things that he has to overcome that are unique to this yeah so um ours has more of a backstory um it's it centers around a character ryan fleming um and uh he's he's kind of dealing with this tragic uh horrific death of his younger brother and um kind of how the mm-hmm. the the church and and church leaders have kind of uh, failed him a little bit as he's he's struggled with this pain he's he's kind of reached this conclusion that you know there isn't a god there's no there's no meaning or or plan to the universe it it uh, he's he's kind of essentially become a nihilist you know as a result of this tragedy and, and as a result of seeing kind of the mm-hmm. the emptiness and hypocrisy sometimes of the of the church and um and so that's kind of the starting lo- starting point. Um, you know, we gave him a little more backstory, and then he goes to this this mega church. Um, a, uh, a projector uh, falls on his head uh, from the, from the ceiling and knocks him out, and he and he has a dream. And and this this uh, this book mm-hmm. is basically the retelling of this dream he has while he's knocked out on the floor of the mega of the mega church. And so, um, and it has <laughs> the multiverse uh, element is kind of fun. So the idea that we had for the book was, you know, what if. Um, Every time you dream, you're essentially tra- traveling to another universe, and that's what's happening in this. It's when you when you when you fall asleep, you're going to another universe, and there's it's another reality that's actually playing out, uh, and God is kind of using that as a, as a part of your story, pushing you towards this reconciliation with the Creator that we were all made for. Um, so this this is the. Uh, this book is basically a retelling of the of the first dream in a series of dreams that will eventually okay. lead Ryan to to faith in Christ. Hmm. So this is actually something that will lead people to a decision point for their own life. Is that correct? Um, n- well, it's no, <laughs> so, no. Okay. I mean, what 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 you'll see. I mean, by the end of our book, uh, Ryan is still not uh, a Christian. Okay. Um, he's he is he's on his way, um, mm. but and and God, you can see God is starting to to work um, powerfully in his life, but he's not there yet. Um, so I don't know if we're going to address that in sequels or not. But okay, um, but yeah, the, it, this doesn't have a um, this doesn't have kind of like a burden falling off the back moment that sure that, uh, okay. Pilgrim's Progress did. Um, it does have a, a scene that kind of evokes that a little bit, um, mm-hmm. but um, we we kind of wanted to um, we wanted to to I guess paint a picture of the the slow process uh, the sometimes the the long process uh, that that God leads people on that eventually mm-hmm. ends in them uh, reaching a saving faith in Christ and. And so we we kept it open ended at the at the end of the book there a little bit, which I thought was a, a kind of a fun twist. Yeah, definitely. You know, because most of the time, you, if you're calling this the postmodern Pilgrim's Progress, people are going to be expecting some of those things to line up almost just like you're retelling it with with, with modern lenses. But yeah. it seems like you've just taken that that principle or the that concept, and you've really made it your own. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure as you've been writing this with Kyle, 
there's been some things in your own life that have caused you to either question or caused you to dig deeper into your own faith. Can you pull back the layers on some of that for your, for us? Yeah, you know, I think, and I suspect I'm not the only one, you know, I think a, a lot of Christians, evangelicals in, in our country right now are, you know, I think there's a lot of, um, there's been a lot of up- upheaval in the church, there's been a lot of mm-hmm. uh, cultural division in the church lately. Um, I think we've seen a lot of our, you know, our Christian leaders and even like, you know, Christian musicians who we, you know, adored in the 90s and the early 2000s who have fallen away or, or mm-hmm. who have either lost the faith or been embroiled in scandal. And and so I think what, one of the things that we really wanted to do in this book was kind of reflect um, what does the Christian journey look like? You know, our, our institutions and our churches and our leaders fail us. You know, what does that quiet faithful, unseen obedience uh, look like? You know, how do we, how do we obey mm-hmm. God when so much seems unclear uh, and, and maybe a lot of things are, are left unanswered in our lives? And so, you know, in, in, with, we have an atheist character, we have a humanist character, we ha- and we tried to, we, we, we parried, parody those characters a little bit, and we have some stereotypes of atheists, right. you know, like the atheist wears a fedora, and, you know, the, the humanist looks a little bit like Bill Gates, maybe, you know, but... <laughs> but um, <laughs> Like the pregnant man emoji. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. And, it, you know, but um, we didn't want to just parody them. We wanted to, we wanted to mm-hmm. also present a fair representation of what they believe and why they believe it. You know, we, we wanted to steel man them a little bit, you know, not straw man them. Um, and so we, we okay. wanted to be fair to, to people who question, people who don't believe, um, show how God, God works even even through those those times of questioning and and, and darkness and confusion, um, so mm-hmm. it, I think it for those reasons it reflects a lot of what me and Kyle have went through, you know, in our our Christian walk, um, and and we hope that it'll, it'll speak to others as well who who have gone through these similar things. That's awesome. I like that you know you're bringing in some really this postmodern world that we live in. There are new temptations even though we know that you know there's it's it's all there's nothing new right. under the sun there's just different ways that it's yeah. presented and and so i appreciate that you're you're taking some interesting creative license to be able to communicate these these truths and through through parody and allegory and a little bit of satire i'm sure is still thrown in there because that's, that's in right. your blood you could probably can't get yeah. away from that you know i'm i'm grateful that you're telling this this story and um you know, I'm a big fan of audiobooks, and this is, you know, this is a podcast mm-hmm. interview. Is, uh, you know, is there? A, a, do you recommend the audiobook from what you've heard I, yet? We're not finished with the audiobook yet. We're we're working on that. Okay. So, um, I think it would make a, a pretty fun audiobook, though. Um, the narrator's yeah. kind of this weird, uh, quirky person. You know, it's very similar to if you've read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. There's there's kind of a a bit of a, a dry wit to it. Gotcha. There are a lot of I was going to ask if that if you would make that rep, if you would make that uh, that correlation there yeah 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 there there are a lot of uh, footnotes you know where he'll he'll kind of like stop the narrative and then you know what's up with you know what's up with meatloaf why do you why do you guys eat that like that's weird you know and so um, <laughs> those those add a, a little bit of fun to the to the proceedings which we enjoyed writing the footnotes. Well, that that's good. So, uh, just so you know, I am planning on getting the the paperback, the Kindle, <laughs> and the audio awesome. version of it because I, I like all you know getting the media however we can and supporting Thank you, you guys and with this work Thank that you're you. doing because it's not just you know it's you're not just about writing witty articles, but there's there's a reason, there's a purpose, there's there's a goal yeah. to the the bigger things that you're doing as well, and this is a way that you can do something that's not it's not the Babylon B, but it's related to it because it's, it's who you guys yeah. are, but it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to get my hands on a copy of well, it. Thank myself. you. Yeah. 
Um, how do people get? How do people get a hold yeah, of it? Well, um, you know, we recommend pre-ordering it. Um, the last book that we published, The Guide to Wokeness, it sold out in two weeks, and it was several months before they could get more wow. copies in. Um, so, if you want to guarantee, you know, getting a copy, I would recommend pre-ordering it on, uh, you know, Amazon. You can pre-order Barnes and Noble. It's also on ChristianBooks.com. Uh, if you don't want to, if you don't want to mm-hmm. do business with Amazon, we've got a lot of feedback with people. <laughs> I don't want to give them my money, so ChristianBooks.com has it. Um, you know, and it, it, I think eventually, maybe two or th- three months after release, we'll probably have it in the Babylon B store as well uh, for people who want to get it that way. But okay. you know, I, uh, ultimately, I, I hope that it's just encouraging to people. That's, I hope it's it's mm-hmm. encouraging to um, to Christians. Um, I, I think that no matter who reads it, there, there's going to be something that you'll be able to to take away from it, and and uh, uh, we Good. hope that it it just has that effect, that that encouraging, uh, uplifting effect on our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen, amen. I'm looking forward to getting my hands on it, as I said earlier. But uh, you know, Joel, before I let you go here, um, I just want to say I appreciate your time, but I got to ask, like. What is the next prophetic Babylon B headline that you can think of right now? <laughs> oh, you want a sneak preview? Here, let's see what we got here. <laughs> sure, give me a sneak preview. Yeah. Um I don't know if these might these might see the light of day, these might not see the light of day. The the thing about what we do is is um you know, it usually takes about 300 pitches to get a couple good headlines and so we're we're waiting through a lot, oh, wow. you know. But we have uh let's see uh the monkey bo- the monkeypox outbreak is contained, says head of CDC while peeling banana with her feet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Um, local gun range overrun by conservative candidates making commercials about how much they love guns. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know. We're a little thin today. I'm going to have to come up with something. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Well, I got to let you get back to work, uh, to you know, to put out some more <laughs> great headlines for the Babylon Bee. But I appreciate taking the time, Joel, to to uh, talk pleasure. with us on the Charisma News podcast and to talk about this postmodern Pilgrim's Progress book. I want to encourage everybody to pre-order it because, as he said earlier, the 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 previous book they did, the Babylon Bee Guide to Wokeness, sold out, and it took a while before people could actually get their hands on it. So make sure you pre-order. It comes out. June 7th and so I hope you get a copy of that and you can uh, read it enjoy it and then share it with a friend this is John Matarazzo for the Charisma News Podcast God bless you thank you for listening to this episode of Along the Way if you've enjoyed joining me along my way please share this with a friend who you think will be encouraged by this podcast also please rate and review Along the Way on iTunes that helps more people discover Along the Way and please subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and through my website, alongtheway.media. On my website, you can sign up to receive newsletter updates whenever I put out a new episode, so you don't miss one. If you want to help support me in this podcast, I have a Patreon page. The link to become a supporter is also in my show notes. I hope that you've enjoyed this part of my journey, and may you realize when Jesus is walking with you along your way. Along the Way is honored to be part of the Charisma Podcast Network. You can find tons of spirit-filled content from their vast catalog of podcasts, including my Monday through Friday news stories for the Charisma News Podcast. Go to cpnshows.com to see the full list and latest episodes.